Hi everyone, Alyssa here for AOP Tech, and I wanted to share some Google Classroom ideas that go beyond just assigning worksheets in this time of E and distance learning uh, for our students. So it's important that we are creative and dynamic as teachers. I know that when we are in person with our students, we are creative and dynamic, and sometimes it can feel overwhelming or really frustrating to try and carry that over to virtual instruction. Um, but what we want to make sure that we're doing is making sure that we give students opportunities to demonstrate their knowledge in a variety of ways. And for us who are using Google Classroom, it can really go beyond just assigning you know, worksheets and formative assessment. Though those have a place and are important, we can really expand out from there. Uh, so that way, long term, we have a really well-rounded uh, view of students' knowledge and a really great way to work with our curriculums. So we're going to look at five ideas to try. Uh, today. These five ideas were ones that I've either seen and also were echoed in a really great tweet uh, that I saw from at Lady Westner and the website Teach, Learn, and Innovate. Uh, you can, I will link those in the description of this video so that way you can get to this as well because there are some really great examples and templates that are built into this suggestion list. Um, and we're also going to look at, with these five ideas, how to assign them uh, properly in Google Classroom as well. So that way, you know, it can, it can be something easy for you and your students and you make sure that you have your settings uh, set correctly. So we're going to look at utilizing collaborative Google Slides, a great way to get students interacting when they can't meet face to face with each other um, or be in the same physical space. Um, interactive drag and drop activities using Google Drawings. My Maps, which is a service that, that ties in with Google Maps, is awesome for map work. Graphic organizers can be done in Google Slides or Drawings. And comics and cartoons can be done with Google Slides and Drawings as well. So I'm going to start with collaborative Google Slides, and I have some demo materials here. And this is just a Google slide. I just put a couple slides in here that maybe I was assigning students a writing project if this was ELA and really it could transfer to any kind of content area. Um, in this case, my thought process was maybe I would have student one, student two, and student three each write a prompt and then they would take turns peer editing one another, uh, things like that. Um, it could be a small group of students that a collaborative doc slide presentation is shared with. It could be the whole group where everybody adds something. Everybody has a specific contribution um, or everybody has the same writing prompt and we put all of our answers, crowdsource it into the same um, into the same Google slide presentation. And that would be a really great way, again, to engage them and have them interact when maybe you don't have an opportunity to be on a Zoom or Google Hangout uh, or have the ability to actually physically meet with them in person. So if I have a collaborative Google slide that I wanna assign, I'm gonna jump into here to classroom. I already opened up an assignment and I just wanna pause at what the settings I might have here. So I'm gonna hit add. I'm gonna pull from my Google Drive. This should come up in my recents, there it is, perfect. And I'm going to hit add. And then I'm going to look at my drop down to the right of that file so I can determine what setting I need. And based on our different kinds of activities today, we might need different settings. So we don't want students to just view file. We want multiple students to edit that file. And remember, that students is plural right there. So that's how we know it's going to multiple students working in the same file piece there. Um, just as a piece of classroom management. I might have them put their, their initials on the slide that's there. I might have names, things like that. Over on the right-hand side, uh, I know that this is for this classroom. And right now, this assignment would go to all students. So if everybody was working on that same one, everybody had a different slide or piece of information they were looking to share, we could keep that. Or I could unselect all students and just select um, specific students 
for small group work. So that's one great idea. Next, we can do an interactive drag and drop activity in Google Drawings. So Google Drawings gives you a, a, a template field so that way you can do graphics and things like that uh, on it, which is a, a great way to have students also do posters or different things like that. So uh, I am in Google Drawings. If you don't know in Drive how to get to Google Drawings, it's going to be under the new in the top left-hand corner. And then you'd have to go to more. So it'll have like docs, slides. It's going to be under more there. So you can go directly to it. And you can see in this Google Drawing template, uh, students would drag and drop the solar system into the right shapes. I actually got this template from one of my favorite websites called Do More with Google Drawings. I will link that as well. Um, and it has great templates for you to do use. You can uh, add a copy to your own drive of those templates and then use them uh, for your students. So students would drag and drop. And then they could turn that in as a piece of assessment. This is great for labeling, um, any kind of drag and drop things, especially if you were things that were, you were doing on your smart board, they might transfer well to this. So you can either make your own or uh, search for templates out there. Do more with Google Drawings is a great resource for that. So if I wanted to assign this type of assignment, I probably would want each student to have their own. So when I am making that Google assignment, Google Classroom assignment, I'm going to go and I'm going to add my file from Google Drive again. I have my template right here, but this time I'm going to make a copy for each student so I can see how each student uh, did on that drag and drop or labeling activity. So that's two. Next on our list is map work with My Maps. So I'm already in My Maps. If you just search My Maps, it'll bring you to it. You see, I uh, started a sample one for the Revolutionary War. I dropped in a pinpoint for the Battle of Lexington. Um, I was able to edit the text so I could put in a description. That's where students maybe would give some information about it. I can add in pictures. So if I went to Washington Crossing, PA, I'm going to, there it is. I can add it to my map. And once I add it to my map, I can edit and put in the information that I need. Hit save. They could uh, add in images or videos. So you could set all the parameters uh, that you would like uh, for students to include in terms of pieces of information. Great for plotting uh, battles of war, different pieces of history, geographic locations in a text, um, even in a, a historical fiction novel. Uh, all of those would be great ways to utilize some of that map work there. Uh, when students are done with all of their pinpoints, if I preview it here, you can see it's highlighting those two locations. And then I could click to the individual ones and see the information that students and picture that they put in, if they put in a picture as well. And students would share this out with a link. So if I were assigning this in Google Classroom, I might have to put in some very specific, I'm going to remove this activity there, I might put very specific instructions uh, on how to do that, maybe even a tutorial video. I might, uh, if I was able to make a full tutorial video for students, I might, or find one, I might attach that here. Um, and then I might ask students on their end in that to, uh, to submit the link that share link to them. So I'm not really assigning them anything other than the, the, the directions. Maybe I put that in a doc so it's in a rubric form, all that kind of good stuff. Um, but they would just submit back that link there. So that is an awesome one and definitely dynamic for students. Next, I'm gonna take a look at some graphic organizers. I'm gonna clean up my tabs right here for a moment. 
We can use Google Drawings or Google Slides to make great graphic organizers. This is another graphic organizer, this Venn diagram to compare two stories. Um, maybe two things from their reader, maybe two things they've read online, two articles. Um, you could swap that out. It could be events, whatever the case may be. Uh, this was a simple Venn diagram that I actually got from Do More with Google Drawings. Uh, you can search for them, or this would have been a pretty quick one to create myself as well in Google, in Google Drawings. I could have also done that in Google Slides. I know some folks like to make their graphics uh, that way in Google Slides, kind of the same way they would have in PowerPoint uh, for folks who didn't have things like Publisher. Uh, that used to be my work around years and years and years ago. Uh, again, this is one when I assign in Google Classroom and I add that file. I'm going to assign that make a copy for each student because most likely I want to see their specific work. Remember when I'm assigned make a copy for each student, when that student opens the file, it's going to add their name uh, as it appears in Google Classroom to the file name. Uh, and don't, don't forget, you're going to have to remind students many a time to hit that turn in submit button. Uh, and then you'll have access to, to seeing it fully there. So that way you can give them feedback uh, as you would typically do. Last one I want to highlight is things like comic strips or cartoons. This again is a Google Drive or a Google Drawing template, excuse me, that I got from the Teach, Learn, Innovate uh, graphic and website. So that's a great tool there. And students could add in pictures. They could be them in real life. Maybe they're narrating what they do in a day, different things. Uh, like that. And they can add in uh, speech bubbles by going to insert shapes. And then under shapes, there's call outs, which give you all kinds of different bubbles um, and giving them just a lot of options to uh, accompany maybe a piece of writing or replace a piece of writing just to be a little bit more dynamic in there. Again, if I'm giving students a template when I want them to do individual work, I'm always going to use this make a copy for each student. Remember that students, plural, can edit file mean all the students who've been assigned that, whether it be the all students drop down or you've done a, a small group selection, will be editing the same file. Both have great use in Google Classroom. So some bonus ideas that I'm not going to jump into necessarily the how-to piece, but I always want to remind folks of is the ability that Google Forms uh, with a video uh, in it can make some instruction, flipped classroom type instruction or Google Forms quizzes. There are videos on our AOP Tech YouTube channel for those. Hyperdocs are a great way to give students a variety and choice within their assignments of demonstration of their knowledge and make them walk through um, kind of multiple steps, the same way you might do so in the classroom. And don't forget about asking students to create things like infographics or digital posters. Again, that can be done in Google Drawings or Google Slides um, and easily attached then because it it's, lives in Google Drive. Uh, it can be easily attached and put into Google Classroom as well. Overall, what you might want to think about are things like student choice and performance assessments to get more dynamic. Those often involve research and those deeper levels of knowledge that we really strive to get to uh, when we're in the classroom and sometimes can feel overwhelming when we're looking at virtual instruction, but are definitely possible when we kind of break out of the mold of just thinking about worksheets. So I hope that this video helps you today. Check out the description uh, below for links to those graphics and template websites that I used. Can't wait to see you next time. Bye.